if you've applied for or received a paycheck protection loan, no doubt the question in your mind now is, okay, how the heck do I receive loan forgiveness? This is the questions everyone's asking. The question that we don't really have any great answers to. Well, luckily the clouds are starting to part. The treasury has shed some light on at least one piece of the puzzle, one piece of the loan forgiveness puzzle that gets us a little closer to understanding what needs to be done in order to have these loans completely forgiven. The question that they address is, how will the SBA review borrowers or businesses good faith certification concerning the necessity for their loan request? So this is important because if the SBA determines that your business doesn't need a paycheck protection loan, then you're no longer eligible for loan forgiveness. So understanding how they're gonna certify whether a business is eligible or not is a huge piece of the puzzle. So their answer is, when submitting a paycheck protection application, this just gives some context, all borrowers must certify in good faith that the current economic uncertainty makes this loan request necessary to support the ongoing operations of the applicant. The SBA, in consultation with the Department of Treasury, has determined that the following safe harbor will apply to the SBA's review of the paycheck protection loans with respect to this issue. Any borrower, together with its affiliates, who receive loans with an original pr principal amount of less than $2 million will be deemed to have made the required certification concerning the necessity of the loan request in good faith. So this is good news for just about everyone watching. Basically, it means that if you're a small business owner, the SBA is gonna leave you alone. They're gonna just assume that you needed this funding, that there was no other source of funding, that, you know, basically, they're gonna believe you. So that's great news. The SBA determined that this is appropriate because borrowers with loans below this threshold are generally less likely to have had access to adequate sources of liquidity than borrowers that attained larger loans. So this was the big issue with all these public companies who had received paycheck protection loans because they can't in good faith say this is the only source of funds we could possibly find because they have the public markets, they have investors, they have liquidity. There's all sorts of ways to fund a larger organization, not as many options for a small organization. It goes on to say, this will also promote economic certainty as paycheck protection borrowers with more limited resources endeavor to retain and rehire employees. Now, I really appreciate that line because basically they're saying that they want to promote the little guys to apply for and receive these paycheck protection loans and not have them worry so much about am I going to receive loan forgiveness or not. Now again, this is only one piece of the puzzle, arguably less than half of the whole puzzle, but I'm glad that they acknowledge the fact that they want small businesses to receive forgiveness. It goes on to say, in addition, given the large volume, volume of paycheck protection loans, this approach will enable the SBA to conserve its finite audit resources and focus its reviews on larger loans where the compliance effort may yield higher returns. So this is exactly what I mentioned in a previous video a few weeks back. The Treasury, the SBA, the Justice Department care much, much more about the large guys, the large offenders trying to make away with millions of dollars potentially over the average small business who you know, is getting a paycheck protection loan from you know, $10,000 to $200,000 and chasing down all the millions of those applicants is simply impossible. They're gonna focus on the people who have you know, $5 million loans or a fraudulent $800,000 loan that's easy to catch. Things like that are gonna be the ones that they focus on even bothering to get any kind of certification of funds. So that's great because that means you can focus on your business and focus on actually earning more money and not worry about the SBA, you know, snooping around in your, in your business, causing, you know, delays and wasting your time. It goes on to say, importantly, borrowers with loans greater than $2 million that do not satisf satisfy this safe harbor may still have an adequate basis for making the required good faith certification based on their individual circumstances in the light of language of the certification and the SBA guidance. Boy, we love how they write these. 
That line is a little bit concerning to me because the SBA's guidelines are the whole reason that we had all these issues with public companies applying in the first place because their language was so vague and nuanced, businesses with more than 500 employees or with millions of dollars in assets could find their ways to you know, sneak in with things like if they're of an NAICS code and they're smaller than the average business in their NAICS code, despite being a massive business, is still considered a small business. So this leaves a lot of wiggle room for people to prove they had no access to additional funding because, I don't know, I would assume that a good lawyer could pretty easily prove that a business tried and failed to receive funding elsewhere. I mean, that one's a little concerning. So uh, finally, as the answer, SBA previously stated that all paycheck protection loans in excess of $2 million in other paycheck protection loans will be subject to review by the SBA for compliance with program requirements. If the SBA determines in this course of its review that a borrower lacked an adequate basis for their required certification concerning the necessity for the loan, the SBA will seek repayment of the outstanding paycheck protection loan balance and will inform the lender that the borrower may not be eligible for loan forgiveness. If the borrower repays the loan after receiving notification from the SBA, the SBA will not pursue administrative reinforcement or refer other agencies to, pr to pursue legal action. So basically they're saying if you received a loan that you weren't supposed to, hey, send it back. Come on, just send it back. And if you received a loan that you weren't supposed to, you don't return it. They later investigate your company, tell you to return it, force you to return it. There's probably not going to be any legal action. So what sign does that send? That basically says, hey, if you're iffy on whether you should return it or not, just keep it and see you know, what exactly they say. I don't know. That's... That's a little crazy. So this is important to point out that this is for legitimate businesses, not fraudulent paycheck protection loan recipients, because those are going to be in a whole different ballgame. Those people are going to be pursued rigorously from uh, the Justice Department. So I'm glad that we're at least one step closer to figuring out this loan forgiveness puzzle for the Paycheck Protection Program. However, like I said, this is only one key to how exactly this is gonna work. I keep getting asked on how exactly people should track expenses for loan forgiveness or what exactly is gonna be needed to be done You know, seven weeks in, eight weeks in after they receive their funding. And I've been hesitant to put out any information because I've yet to find any clear guidance. So once I have any solid information, I will 100% put this information out and maybe I'll make a spreadsheet or something like that to make this much more simple in order to receive loan forgiveness because it's really important to me that all of you who are watching actually get loan forgiveness because that's the whole benefit of this program. So make sure you subscribe in order to be notified of any future updates, things that I figure out in the coming weeks and months. And until next time, I'd like to thank you for watching and I hope you have a profitable day.